Jesus. Come on, let's praise the name of our God. Let's praise the name of our God. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Come on, all over the building, we bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. We bless your name today, God. We bless your name, God. Your name is our healer. Your name is our deliverer. We bless your holy name. You, the we bless your God. We bless your name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless your holy name, who forgiveth all of thy iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that the root is renewed daily. That's why we bless you. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to us, God. You've been so good to us. You've made ways for us. Oh, you've been so good, Lord. You've been so good, Lord. I'm about to shout it. You've been so good, Lord. You've been so good to us. We just spend time just telling you how good you've been. You are a good God. You are a great God. Great is your name. Hallelujah. Great is your name. Your name is great God. You are the great God. You are the great I am. You are the great God. You are the great God. 
Great God today. Great God today. None, none less like you, God. None like you, Lord. You're our divine healer. You're our divine healer. Some of us don't take medicine. We depend on your word. That says you are the balm in Gilead. We give you glory, God, for what you've done. You've kept my body up. During this pandemic, it's been nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. You maintained God we give you glory We don't rush it today We give your name glory We give your name glory Glory We give your name glory We give your name praise for you're worthy. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Are you? Come on, can we lift up our hands all over this building? Those of you that are watching, just lift up your hands and say, You're worthy, Lord. Even in our sickness, you're worthy. Even in our doubt, you're worthy. Even in our debt, you're worthy, Lord. We lift your name up. You're so worthy today, God. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We want to give it to you. Hallelujah. We want to give you glory. We give you glory. God, we glorify you. We glorify you, God. The great God that you are. The mighty God that you are. Strong and mighty. Mighty in battle, our God. We give you glory. The all powerful God. Glory. Glory. Come on, enter into his presence. Enter into his presence. We give you glory. Oh! 
worship you, our Lord. You so worthy to be praised. One more time, all over the building. You are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are. Abba Hosha. Anana Namoshia. Ayaba Mahashi. Anaba Hosha. We give you all. We give you all. Oh, 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 oh. One more time, all over the building. Come on, singers, let me hear you. We give you all.
Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength yes, yes, yes. they shall mount up with wings yes. as eagles yes. they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint yes. the word of the lord is blessed may it be sanctified in our hearts and give us all a better understanding in the hands of our praise team jesus knows all about our struggles and he will guide till the day is done there's not one friend like the Lord Oh 
It said, has thou not known that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he don't faint. He does not faint. He's aware of what's going on. Oh, yeah. and, he, and, and he said, neither is he weary. It's no searching of his understanding. That was Isaiah 40 and 28. Yeah. But Isaiah 41 picks it up uh -huh. and tells us, Fear. 41 and 10. Uh -huh. Fear thou not. Uh -huh. Hiya, glory. Because what? I'm with, I'm with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yeah. I will strengthen thee. Yeah. I will uphold thee yeah. with the right hand of my righteousness. Yeah. I want to leave this with you this morning. We don't have to fear. Yes, it's not a surprise to God what's going on. Yeah. Put your trust in the Lord, yeah. and he will bring you out. Yeah. Hold on to God like never before. Yeah. It's only a test. Yeah. This too shall pass. And the Lord brought you through. The Lord made a way. He's the same God. There is no expiration date on his blessing. It's not good until 2000. But it goes on and on and on. He said, I am the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. If I can call Lazarus back from the dead, who's been there three or four days, I can work out with you. I want to encourage you to hold on this morning. Hold on. Focus, don't look to the left or to the right. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's never, he is the bride. I bless his holy name. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Endure holiness today. Endure as a good soldier. And the Lord will see you through. Because he's not slack concerning his promise. If the Lord said,
remain standing. Everybody stand to your feet. Y'all can come on down. Remain standing. I enjoyed Mother Stevenson. Amen. I enjoyed Mother Stevenson. Can someone lift your hands and say, Lord, in everything, I praise you. The Lord told me to tell someone today, I don't know who you are, you can be watching. I was trying to think of something to say after Mother Stevenson finished on praising God, why you should praise him. I was going to say, you have hands, you have feet, you have a, a mouth. The Lord said, Eric, tell my people they should praise me because I'm God and they are not. When you understand what I just said, he's God. Come on, everybody just lift up your hands, that one hand towards heaven and say, he's God. He's God. Now put that other same hand on yourself and say, I'm not. I'm not. And for that reason, I have a right to praise God. Somebody just lift your hands and say, he's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. Not my employer. He's God. Not from job, he's God. Not my husband, he's God. Not my wife, he's God. Not the mother, the father, he's God. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. He did more than I ever expected. He did more. Brother Marcus, I need you up here. Than I ever expected. He did more. Oh, I ever expected. He did more. Than I ever, y'all have a mic singing. He did more than I ever. He did more. And I'm standing here only because you 
giving you time to praise God. I'm giving you time to praise Him. Some people are saying we shouldn't be praising God. But He brought me from March to May. He brought us from March to May. Some of us thought that we would have had COVID by now, but God. He sustained us. He maintained me. God bless you. Please be seated so we can breathe. Second Samuel. You might not be able to have gotten happy over it. He's God and you're not. But can you at least rejoice and look at somebody and say God did it? Look at somebody else because they didn't do, they didn't get the right response. Look at someone else and tell them, God did it. Now look up towards heaven and shake your head like we do when we mean what we say and say what we mean and say it was nobody but God. Come on, put your, put your preaching voice on and say, nobody but God. It makes a difference when you ain't about to lose nothing. You have nothing to lose. But when you have everything to lose and God makes a way. He turned it around. those two words but God David said it best I had almost fainted God bless you God bless you glory thank you Jesus if it had not been the Lord who was on our side God bless you Of my life, I am a 
You are the source of my strength. unto him and said unto him there were two men in one city I want y'all to get it 2 Samuel the 12th chapter Father word my mouth give me what to give your people do as your word has declared I will not return unto you void but will accomplish what it set out to do in Jesus name Two men in a city, the one rich and the other poor. Jehovah. The rich man had exceeded many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him. And with his children it did eat of his own meat. And drink of his own cup. And lay in the, his bosom. And was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he spared to take off his own flock. Take of his own flock. And of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was to come him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And David said to Nathan as the Lord liveth the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the land fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. What does verse 7 say, mother? And Nathan said to David, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. You, David, are the man. 
Thus, the Lord said, the Lord God of Israel, I anointed, I anointed thee. King over Israel. David, this is what the Lord is telling you. Saints of God, this is what the Lord is telling us today. I have anointed you. Uh-huh. And I have delivered thee out of the I hand have delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Of your enemy. And I gave thee my master's I house. I gave thee the master's house. And thy master's wives. And the master's wives into, into thy, thy bosom. bosom. Uh-huh. And gave thee the house of Israel. And gave thee the house of, of Judah. And Judah. And if that had been too little. If that was not enough. I would moreover have given unto thee such I would have given you more. such things. Would have given you more. Real quickly for a topic. And I'm almost through. I told you I wouldn't be up long today. Lay your hands on your chest. Lay your hands on yourself. Even those of you that are watching, lay your hands on yourself and say, I have to. I have to. Guard. Guard. My anointing. My anointing. In this, in this season, stay there, Minister Cedric. In this season, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to tell your people? What do you want me to tell your people, God? And the Lord spoke to me and said, Eric, tell my people out of everything that I've given you. Yes. I've given you houses. Yes. I've given you and blessed you with jobs. Yes, 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 yes. And now the un unemployment rate is that 30 million people my are now without jobs. All right. And some of us, God has blessed yes, 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 still yes. on a job. Working from home, not having to spend gas money. That's it. Amen. God did this. God has preserved our lives. God has kept his people. I thought you are his people. You can say amen. God has kept his people. Amen. Amen. He's kept our children. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. And out of everything that God has done for us. Yes, yes. Tell my people there guard what I've given you. Guard my anointing. Guard it. We first have to understand that it's not ours. It's not ours. My mom and daddy used to tell us, or my dad used to tell us that we didn't have, growing up, we didn't have any value system. I don't know if Mr. Nick remember that word. He used to use that all the time. You don't have any value system because we didn't pay for nothing. Amen. Everything that we got was given to us. Amen. Amen. And it makes a difference. When you don't pay for it. Amen. A world of difference. Amen. But in order for us to treasure and guard the anointing, we have to understand that the anointing costs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I used to say it all the time, salvation is free, but the anointing costs. I never understood it. I never understood it until I started going through. Until I was crying late in the midnight hour. Until I would wake up thinking about the same thing that I went to bed with. Yes. On my mind, waking up the same yes, day. Yes, yes. Until I got started talked about. Yes. Until yes. people were scandalizing my name. Yes. All right. But when you go through it, oh, go through it. And you don't charge God foolishly. That's it. That's it. And you still live right. Live right, right. Live right. That's when you treasure what God has given you. You don't get the anointing on discount. You don't get the anointing on sale. Amen. The anointing doesn't go on sale. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you got to pay for it. 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 You can't spend dollars and pay for the anointing. I got a thousand. I got ten thousand. Oh, you can't pay for the anointing that kind of way. You got to pay for it down on your knees. And when you realize David all throughout all throughout the word of the Lord tells us in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Samuel, David was anointed as a young man. Anointed, yes he was. You were anointed, David, as a young man. You killed a lion with your hands yeah. and a lion and a bear with your hands. Yeah. Even Goliath, you, you had nothing, David, when you went to, to, to defeat the Philistine giant, Goliath, you had nothing. Yes. And David, you said, I come to you. 
not with swords and spears. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Oh, that's it. That's what he's saying. David realized he was anointed. Yes, he did. But through the years, he got comfortable. Yes. Saints of God, my first point, you can't get comfortable with it. Amen. You can't get comfortable with it. Amen. You can't get comfortable with the anointing. You gotta guard it with your life. You gotta treasure what God has deposited into you. When you are anointed, you can't just live any kind of way. I'm almost finished. I know some of y'all don't understand what I'm saying, but when you are anointed, you just can't hang out with everybody. Sometimes when you are anointed, you gotta separate yourself. Sometimes you got to go to bed and you see other people on Facebook or just scrolling. They out dropping in and, and social butterflying and, and you at home by yourself. It's all right. Paint the picture. Talk you have to understand. You got to understand. God doesn't use just anybody. He doesn't deposit Hallelujah. his anointing in anybody. He doesn't. And the mistake that we make is the anointing is not a gift. Amen. A gift is a gift. But the anointing, you live right with the anointing. You pay for it with the anointing. You go through with the anointing. You don't charge God foolishly and you're not bitter. The anointing makes you better. The anointing makes you come out smelling like a rose. And when you get to that point, you got to guard. You got to guard. It's more precious than your job. It's more precious than your wife. You can get another wife, but you can't get the anointing back when she loses. And David said in Psalm 51, when Nathan told him, you the man, David, you the man. You took Uriah's only wife. The Lord told David, I, I, I would have given you anything you asked for. Because I've anointed you, I've called you, I've separated you. I would have given you anything, David. Yeah. You would have, you should have just asked me instead of taking this one man's wife. Yeah. You took the man's wife and you had him killed. Man. Look at somebody and say, you know better. You know Come on, look at him and tell him, you know better. You, know you, know you can't do it your way. You know the anointing is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. Not the anointing. That's right. David said, and I'm close. Psalm 51. He told, he said five things. Purge me. Wash me. Create in me. Blot out my iniquities. And then he says, Lord, I think it's going down to the 11th of the 12th verse. Whatever you do, God, don't take from thy presence. Don't take your anointing. And take not thy Holy Spirit. Don't take, God, don't take your anointing from me. Because at some point in time, saints of God, you're going to have to realize. You're going to have to realize what God has given you. It's more valuable than anything else. It's more valuable. Do you not know when you are anointed, you can take a rag and a rock and defeat a giant? You don't believe it? Ask David. When he took the slingshot. Amen. All he had was a rag and a rock. Amen. When you are anointed, God will allow you to use a little of nothing and do great things. You don't need much when you're anointed. I don't need money when I'm anointed. Why? Because God will send favor. Amen. And, then, and there's a difference between wealth and riches. God will send wealth Amen. without the money. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? Wealth is you don't have it, but you know who to get it from. <laughs> he puts people in your path yes, he will. that blesses you. Yes, he will. God orchestrates when you are anointed. Yes, yes. He orchestrates yes, he does. your path. That's it. And he says, I'll lead you mm. the path of righteousness. For my name's sake, not because your name is Stevenson, but because you carry anointing. Yeah, you carry. And when you carry the anointing, 
Yes. You can't do what you want to do with it. You can't live how you want to live with it. That's right. My wife, and I'm closing. My wife was pregnant. Our daughters, our twin girls, I love them dearly. Those little twin girls are my heart. And so is Eric. And so is my wife. Because they all watch. It. Just everybody. 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 Those twin girls were born. When they came here, my wife was like a month old. A month. Uh, she was a, a, just a month in pregnancy. She was carrying them just at a month. And around a month and a half, she started feeling, having what she thought were severe pain. And she went to the hospital. We went to the hospital. I don't know where Eric was, but we went to the hospital. And we stayed there for around three or four hours. And we didn't know if we had lost the baby or not. We knew she was pregnant with one. They came back and they did surgery, I mean x-rays and, and performed all type of procedures. And they came back in the room around two hours later. Around eight or nine, the doctors came in and told us. They said, Mr. Stevenson, Mrs. Stevenson, you all are pregnant with twins. And then later on, they said that my wife had some type of preeclampsia or y'all y'all know what it is. Somebody just had to, amen. I, somebody amen. say amen. 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 Preeclampsia or something. Amen. And they told me, us, Brother McGee, they put my wife on complete bed rest. Amen. On complete bed rest. Yes, yes, yes. I'm thinking I'm going to have to do everything. Everything. You hear me? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do everything, God. And I'm, I'm saying to myself, "We got it, babe. We got it. We got it, babe. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this." And I'm thinking to myself, "God, I can't do all this. I can't do some, God. You're gonna have to do something." Yes, somebody is. Yes, yes. My wife came home and she couldn't vacuum. Man, she couldn't clean up like she normally does. Man, my wife is good for cleaning and. And, and she's good. She's a, she can clean. She reminds me of so much of my mom. I always want to clean. Every day, just get up clean. My wife couldn't do nothing. I mean, her feet were so, her legs were so big. I have pictures, y'all. I'll, I'll show you. Her legs were so big at five months. I mean, she looked like Chucky. This is huge. Amen. Amen. It happens between us. Amen. Couldn't do nothing. Amen. And for the rest of the pregnancy, Five months couldn't do nothing. Six months couldn't do nothing. Seven months couldn't do nothing. Eight months couldn't do anything. Nine months. She was ready to bring forth. Yeah. Pastor, why did you tell me all of that? Because when you're carrying, carrying. there's a certain way you got to do. Yeah. You can't do what you want to do. No, you can't. Andrew couldn't clean like she normally cleans. Every day this week, I lied not to you, every day this week, Andrea has been vacuuming. Every day this week. But when she was carrying, she couldn't vacuum. Amen. When you're carrying the anointing, it's not about what you want. It's not about what you are used to doing. When you carry the gift, you got to walk a certain way. You got to sleep a certain way. Andrew had to sit down. She couldn't just sit down. There's a certain way you got to live when you carry the anointing. The Lord told me to tell you today, and I'm through. You got to guard what I've given you. During this corona, during this COVID, guard it, guard it, guard it, guard it. I know we've spent time wondering how we're going to get fed and what if we get another stimulus check they're supposed to get another one for 2000 and God I hope we get it and I hope we get it don't worry about it God says I'm going to supply all your need according to what I got in glory I'm going to supply your need even if the other stimulus check doesn't pass my God shall supply my need yes he will I leave with you today saints of God Get back to, I've been saying it almost every Tuesday night on our Bible study. Get back to the basics. Get back to seeking his face. Get back to treasuring what God has given you.
Do you not know with the anointing you thrive when other people are failing? I know you're right. I know you're right. Amen. Amen. In this, in this season, they're talking about a recession. And the Lord is blessing his people to buy cars. Amen. The Lord is blessing his people to buy homes. Amen. Amen. Just got a testimony just last week. Some woman at this church closed on her new home. God fixed the interest rate so just for her. And shall not God avenge his own? He'll do it, McGee. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. What am I going to do in the meantime? Wait on it. And be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of keep on waiting. Keep on waiting. You might have to lose from people in the process. Keep on waiting. And sooner or later, let's go turn in your favor. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. God's going to bless his people. God's going to sustain his people. I'm through. I was talking to a contractor. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm through. I was talking to a contractor. Yesterday. And I didn't share this with anybody but my wife. I was telling the contractor, I said, you know, my wife and I are looking to purchase a new home. We're looking to do this. Looking to do that. And he said, yeah, Eric, the way the economy is now, this is what he told me. Things are really about to get worse. And they're talking about that uh, the financial system is going to be the worst since the Great Depression. When he told me that, my flesh started... I just thought, oh, oh God, what we'll do, what we'll do. And it was in this church yesterday. And in my shando. See, it doesn't matter what your flesh thinks, but you can't let your flesh get in your shando. Your shando is your spirit. And I'm, I refuse. We might be headed for a great depression, but when you are anointed, when you are anointed, anointed. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. hallelujah, God has a way of protecting his people. Yeah. Yeah. When you are anointed, God has a way of seeing the blood on the doorpost. When you are anointed, God has a way of passing over. What's happening to every other person ain't happening to me. That's why you got to guard it. That's why you got to guard it. That's why you got to guard it. Not because you can get the blessings, but because it's too much. He's deposited too much in you. He's deposited too much in you. Well, Pastor, how do I know if I'm anointed? When you can take little and turn it into much. And still come out smelling like a rose. And what God will do is he will allow blessings to overtake you. I looked up the word, Minister Cedric, between overtake and overwhelm. I wondered why it said overtake. Overwhelm, one translation means to bury. To bury. One translation of overtake is it catches up. And you feel like you're at the back of the line. It catches up with you when it overtakes you. So when the word of the Lord says and blessings will overtake, you might not start off on top. But the blessings of the Lord catches up with you. You might feel like you at the bottom, but the blessings of the Lord. You might feel like people left you, you were forsaken, you're at the end, but the blessings of the Lord. 
will overtake us. I'm just running my race. I'm just running my race. And I, Lord, where is everybody? Where is it? Where is it, God? And the word of the Lord says, I will have blessings to catch up with you. I'll have blessings to catch up with you. And when you end up where you are, all of y'all end up together. You don't lose nothing. Look at somebody and tell them, you don't lose nothing. You don't lose nothing. I want to pray. I want to pray. I'm through. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Word of the Lord says in Ephesians, having done all to stand. Stand on the word. Stand on his word. Thanks to God, stand on his word. Stand on his word. Stand on his word. Stand on his word that says, I once were young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I don't know about you, but I'm living right. I'm not committing adultery. I'm not falsifying my taxes. I'm not doing nothing. I'm living right. And some blessings are due me. Because the word declares no good thing. Will he withhold from them? I want to admonish you and encourage you today. Hold on to the Lord. It doesn't matter how dark it looks. It doesn't matter how dim it looks. I want you to know. And the word of the Lord comes to you today. To tell you in Galatians 6 and 7. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Say, Pastor, I needed that word today. I don't feel like I am anointed and I feel like I'm just existing. I feel like I'm just existing. And the, please understand, saints. We have never seen what we're seeing today. Amen. This is new to everybody. Amen. And everybody is handling it differently. Amen. My little son is being homeschooled. Yeah. He was going to school three days a week until this happened. And now he loved going to school. Yeah. I mean, he would wake up every day. Daddy, am I going to school? Mommy, am I going to school? Every day he was just happy to go to school. Yeah. So much so he... Went home, came home one day and said, Daddy, I got a brother. <laughs> I said, what, what do you mean, son? I started doing my dad. What, 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 what do you mean? My dad would stutter when, you know, he didn't know if it was true or false. He said, Daddy, I got a little brother. I said, what's your brother's name? Told me and my wife, Porter. No, it's not. <laughs> I said, okay. So Andrew takes him to school every day, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, picks him up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And one day she met Porter. She met Porter's parents. And Eric, they, they send the pictures home with us. And Brother McGee, his arm or, or, or is around Porter. And Porter's this little white boy. And I, we've all embraced Porter. My family has embraced Porter. Porter's family has embraced Eric. And we love Porter. When we're on Zoom, Eric looks for one person. Porter. That's all he looks for. He doesn't look for anybody else. He calls everybody else ugly. Everybody else but Porter. And Porter gets on there and he just talks and he's only talking to Porter. And, and the Zoom call is going on and, and we're saying, hey, Eric, be quiet. Let, let everybody else talk. Porter, how are you doing? But now, Eric hates going to school. Said, Daddy, I don't want to go to school. Because school now is upstairs in our office. And mommy is teaching him. He, does, he hates going to school. He, we have to give him snacks every 10 minutes. To keep him in school for one hour. Just snack, just snack. 
And I, every time I say a baby all through school, no, it's playtime. It gets 10 minutes of playtime. I'm thinking, this boy got 10 minutes? Every hour, just, just 10 minutes here and there, just 10 minutes. It's a new norm for everybody. What he used to like, he doesn't like no more. Because it's not the same. And this has affected everybody differently. But one thing remains the same. His word says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and in the future. His word does not change. And because his word has no expiration date, you cannot give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. I'm praying. If your head is bowed, every house closed, you say, Pastor, that's me. I needed this word. I needed to be encouraged and reminded that I have too much to lose. And I have to guard what God has given me. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. If you say, Pastor, that's me, will you just lift your hand? Will you just lift your hand? Even those of you that are watching, if you put your name, if you just say, I need prayer, we will pray for you. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed, every hand is lifted. Father, today we come to you. We come to you, God, as humble as we know how. And we ask you as David asked you. Forgive us. Wash us. Make us whole. Create in us a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within us. God, some of us have gotten comfortable with your anointing. We've gotten comfortable in our calling. Touch us again. Restore unto us. Hallelujah. The joy of our salvation. In the name of Jesus. We speak restoration. We speak restoration. In this house. Restore God. Restore. Restore God. Restore. Restore God. We don't want to get comfortable with what you've given us. We don't want to miss where you're taking us, God. Restore unto us, God. Restore us, God. Restore us to our first love. In the name of Jesus. Wash us and make us whole. In the name of Jesus. God, here we are today. Look on your people. We need you, God, as never before. We need you, God. We need you, God. We're coming to you, God. We're coming to you asking you to help us, Lord. We open our mouths and ask you to help me, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and ask the Lord to help. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Put me on the right track. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to get too far from your glory. I don't want to get too far from my connection. Help me, Lord. I need thee, God. I need you. I need you. In the name of Jesus, draw us nearer to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, if there's any sin, anyone that needs forgiveness, we ask that you would forgive and wash. Make whole. In the name of Jesus, wash us, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We give you glory and honor for what you've done and for who you are. We clap our hands and give you exalted praise. Come on, y'all. Is that the best you can do? Come on, we clap our hands and open our mouths and give you exalted praise. You may take your seats. We praise the name of our Lord. We praise God for you. We hope that something was said or done to push you towards your promise, your purpose, and your potential. We hope something was said or done.
to push you towards your promise, your purpose, and your potential. We're going to receive our offering right before we do. I want to make just two announcements, one observation. We are praying for the Murphy family. Amen. We're praying for Pastor Herbert Murphy Amen. and First Lady Murphy. Amen. They buried their daughter on yesterday. Amen. And we're praying for them, their baby daughter, to my understanding. We're praying for them. We wanted to be with them on yesterday, but um, we were going to surprise them but um, couldn't get away because of an emergency that popped up at the last minute and we had to stay here. But we're definitely praying for that family. Amen. 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 Definitely praying for that family. And we want you to know, Pastor Murphy, if you happen to see this, Greater Harvest is praying for you. Amen. I said Greater Harvest Amen. is praying Amen. for you. Amen. We're praying for you. And we definitely have you covered and your family, your wife, your family covered in prayer. Amen. Amen. And our, our second announcement, uh, well, that was an observation. Uh, we definitely, I didn't address the house earlier, but we definitely praise God uh, for our first lady, first lady Andrea, Amen. Mother Stevenson, our founder, our musicians, to all of the Lord's people. Um, we're so glad. Uh, thank you, Facebook and social media. Uh, whatever platform you're watching us from, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for allowing Greater Harvest to come into your home, on your job, and even in your car. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching uh, us online. We will be here every Sunday, every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. We're so glad that you tuned in. Be sure that you invite someone uh, to share the good news, the gospel, worship, and praise. Amen. We believe in allowing the Lord to have his way. Uh, this is a church we shout, we dance, we speak in tongues, Amen. we live right, and we do the word. Amen. 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 We do. We praise God. We believe in praising God. Amen. Amen. I understand that people are saying, well, you, you shouldn't be doing praise breaks, and you shouldn't be doing this, and you shouldn't be doing that. As long as I can do this. a reason to give God praise yeah, man. I don't stop praising God during COVID I don't stop praising God when I don't have money I don't stop praising God when I lose a loved one because the word says in everything All right. God bless you we're, 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 we're trying to get out we're Please trying to get ready. out we are, we, are, we are somewhat like the battery ever ready uh, you can say, ah! and, and you're ready.
look at someone and tell them it's not a put on it's a come on because all I have to do is to think God bless you and some of, some of us are just crazy praisers we praise God over a stimulus check that we ain't even got yet. We praising God for two thousand dollars. We don't know how we go get it, but we. That's how crazy some of us are. We don't even have to have it. We don't even have to have it. We don't know when it's coming. We don't know how it's coming. But all we know that is on the way. God bless you. God bless you. So that's who we are. Always join in. We praise the name of our God. It's time to receive our offering. It's time to receive our offering. I want to make one announcement. Sister Wallace is coming. I want to make one announcement. God bless all of you that are here. On the fifth weekend, on the fifth weekend in May, that is May the 29th, well, May the 30th and 31st. Greater Harvest is undertaking something and we need your help. We need your help. The Lord has laid it on my heart and our community initiative partners. Um, we want to feed 100 families. We want to supply 100 boxes of groceries to our Nashville community. Many of our neighbors and people that we might know are without jobs. Um, husband and wives are without an income. And we want to, we don't want to just shout and dance and have church without being the church and so i'm asking you those of you that are watching those of you that can hear me we're going to be collecting um, canned goods um, flour meal sugar uh, we're giving out 100 boxes so we need 100 things of flour 100 things of meal 100 things of sugar our plan our plan is also to provide 75, 75 gift cards, gift cards, 75 gift cards or gas cards to Kroger um, for $25. That's our plan. And although we have the plan, we have a vision, we need you to help it to come for it to come to pass. We need you those of you that are watching, even those of you that are in the pew, to make sure that we're able to do what we do, uh, to make sure that we are going to do what we're doing. We're asking for your help, if you can, only if you can. Um, any donation you can give, there is a flyer. There's a flyer that's going to be posted. Um, First Lady is watching, and she's going to, watch, she's going to post a flyer um, on Facebook. It gives you more information um, on how to give or how to donate or when it is that's on the fifth Saturday the fifth Saturday I just sent it to first lady and I'm sending it to our cameraman um, and so they're going to post the flyer to our Facebook um, page 